Keep up the good work. Keep up your energy. You got energy. I love that. Thank you, Vivek. I love that. Nice hey. to meet you. Walter, good to see you, man. Please, can I give that to you? It's a letter I gave to Jim Jordan. Sure. A years ago. We'll read it. Yep. Yeah. Keep it. Take a look. Yep. Thank sure. you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for doing all I appreciate all it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. We're good? Yeah. yeah, good, 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 good. I didn't realize yet. Yeah. Oh, good, good, good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good to see you guys. I was really impressed with you at the summer meeting. Thank you. Milwaukee. Thank you. I appreciate that. Everything you were yeah. very impressive. Thank you. So, you thank were you. you were there after. I was there the for the majority strategies. Oh, good. So oh, well, thank you there. for saying so. I appreciate it. We're uh, yeah. we're gonna keep going for this country one way or another. I promise good. you that. All right. Well, so, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate um, that. I Taking on the deep state. Thank you. Very impressive. That's that's the whole ball game, right? Very impressive. Is uh, unelected bureaucrats. That's what we actually need. Yeah. So. I mean, it's, uh, a big battle. A it lot is. Of, a lot of craziness out I there. mean, you got millions of federal bureaucrats. Start by firing a million of them. Send them home. And that's how you drain the lifeblood out of this administrative state is you can't reform it. You got to shut it down. So exactly. That's kind of way I look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. What was it? Lighting or something? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's, that's really going to be the first start in taking Thank you. He's a pro. Thank you so much. It's good to see you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Nice absolutely. Nice Thank you guys. Good to meet you, brother. Yeah. Walters. Okay. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. Keep up the good spirits, guys. And thanks for supporting everything that's going on here. Yep. My son and you. Yeah. Hey, man, what's up? Father and son? Yeah. Good to see you. You guys from around here? Yeah. From Tennessee. Nice. Yeah, quick question for you. Sure. Did you play high school football? I didn't. No, I played tennis. Okay, yeah. I went to Ignatius. You went to Mason? I went to Ignatius. So. Ignatius. No, I went to St. X. Yeah, you went to St. X. I was the X guy. Yeah, we were, yeah. you know, rivals. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, guys. Well, I appreciate you saying hello, guys. And, and yeah. St. Ignatius, we missed the we missed the rivalry. It used to be fun. It used yeah. to be fun. Good seeing you. Yeah. Oh nice yeah, to meet you. Michael. It's good to pleasure. see you. Man. Good to meet Karen. you. Hi, Karen. Good to see you. Nice to see you. We've seen you before. Oh, I'm not sure. Ohio. It, yeah. You're from around here, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good yes. to see you. Appreciate all you saying. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Karen, look at the camera. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate Please it. Take care. Round up these. Republicans. That's what we need. And, 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 and even Americans, just outside of restoring for sanity, restoration. You are wonderful at speaking for everyone. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're not going to stop. I promise you that. It's good seeing you, Harry. Good to see you. Thank you, Harry. I appreciate it. Thank you. Donna, it's nice to meet you. Here we go. Absolutely. Meet you. So wonderful to have you here. Thank you. It's good to be here, guys. Thank you thank for you. coming. So thank you, Bill. Bill good to see you. Love you on Dave Smith. Oh, he's a good dude. He's a strong uh, libertarian-minded instincts, but he's, he's able to kind of talk about the tougher issues. Yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Picture with you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, good to see you, brother. Good to see you guys. Neil, how are you? Good to see. You. Everybody's bugging you. Sorry. No, it's good. It's good. We're just saying hello to everyone. No, good, to, good to see you. We're, here. we're we have, there's a lot to be concerned about in the country, but there's at least a uh, good reason to remain optimistic, too. So, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for coming. Good seeing you, man. How are you? Okay. Good to see you. You look great. This will President Trump, if you can pass on this, too. We'll take a look. Absolutely. Okay. Just Absolutely. Just check it out. Cool. Because uh, I'll get up to you. Good. He's coming in on, on Saturday for rally. Yeah. yeah I'm, 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 I'm going to be out of town for that one. I'll be out of town. but I'm going to be there anyway. On, Thank you, Neil. Grace. Appreciate it. Hey, Grace, good to see you. Love these guys. Grace, just came in Grace, to see good you. to see you. Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Hey, VP. Oh, sorry. Whatever's required. Oh, no. Whatever's, Whatever's required. I'm going to do that. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. That means a lot, Grace. Thanks. We're not going to. We're going to stay the. Keep the stay the same course for this country. Thank you, Grace. It means a lot. You from around here? I'm from Michigan. From Michigan. Ready? 
Thank you. Thank right. you guys. Thank you. It means a lot. Thank you. Right. Tell them thank you, too. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Good to see you, man. How are you? Good to see you, Good to see you. How's it going? Awesome. I really appreciate your first debate. Thank you, I loved it. That's inspired me. I appreciate it. I'm a big Trump supporter, but also it drew me to you as well. Thank you. Take the shackles off. Didn't you like Nikki, Nikki Haley? You called her out. Loved it. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I don't. Can I get a picture with you? <laughs> you, you might have been a minute. You did have one. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, hey. Thanks for what you do. I wanted to welcome you to Lake County. It's been a warm welcome. I'm glad to be here. Glad you're here. Thank you. I know you're going to say a lot of wonderful things. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you know giving us people a sense of where we're headed. Yes. So, thank and you. Everyone loves you, especially the young ones. Yeah. I appreciate it. I, I appreciate it. And my kids do. That's, that's why we're doing it. We're doing it for the next generation. And, and we've lost our sense of who we are, but it doesn't have to stay that way. Well, you're speaking the right terms. Thank you. And everyone's hearing you, especially, like I said, the young ones. Thank you. And we're so glad you're here. Thank you. Thanks I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Yes. The, good to see you. Yes, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Guys. Thank you. Here we go. Oh, my God. Excellent, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's got the camera. Thank you. And I'm you outside. This is my husband. It's good to see you. You brought to the debate. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it. And Trump wasn't winning. Running, uh, we'd be voting. I'd be voting. Thank you. I think, I think, I think that's the best of ways. Man, absolutely. Thank you. We need less professional politicians. Oh, yeah. absolutely. That's why, like, that's why like, you know, some Bernie here is here is doing a good job as well. Okay. So, absolutely. appreciate that. And you appreciate want to Thank you. Yes, yes, absolutely. I just want to give you the book. Thank you. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I'm gonna, my bedtime story tonight if I make it home. Well, it's good. A, a hard work, it's a good thing. Yeah. Teach them how to take out the trash. I like that. <laughs> it sounds good. There you go, Dave. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Cuyahoga County Board of Elections. Yes. I see the shirt. It's now, good. Should I address it's very important you as, for the country. Uh, Mr. Vice President or Mr. Secretary? <laughs> whatever, whatever is required for the country, we're going to okay. do it. I appreciate it, my man. Thank Got you. Got a little of good luck talking for you. Oh, is that right? What is this? Just a little Irish good luck. I'll take it. All right. I'll take that. Thank I you. Get, it's kind get of you. All right. Good luck any day. I appreciate that. Be safe. Thank you, man. I appreciate right. it. Means a lot. Means a lot. I got him. Jerry, hey, how are you? you? Again. <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. Thank Senator you. Serino. We have a friend, George Lang. In oh Commons. yes, yes, yes. He's a good man. He told yes. me about you. He's actually. a good man. Well, thank you. Rob. He's very enthusiastic about everything you're doing. This is my wife, Donna. Hi. Good to see you. What you're doing. We know it's not easy being in politics. That's kind. Well, thank you. We met last year when you came to Columbus and we had a group meeting on ESG. Yeah, that's right. That's when we. And you've taken an interest in that as well. Absolutely. Yeah, George. Yeah, skate passed. to where the puck is going a little bit because it's not just the government through the front door threatening our liberties. They're using these private sector right. actors to get right. done through the back door. Right. People like Fink. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're the kings of this. So we ended up getting, complex. George and I got some legislation passed. Oh, did you? Okay, to good. To prevent uh, happening, investments. This, there's a number of uh, happening in states across this country, and a lot of it takes in the place in the form of shareholder voting. Right. right, voting the shares. They're doing the proxies. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. We're so, on top of it. Well, I, I think so. Thank you for taking well, an interest. Thank, thank in you for running. Tough issue. Can stay in the fray. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to stop. Okay. I All promise right. you that. Thank, keep Pleasure up. to meet you. How long have you served? Uh, I'm in finishing my fourth year. And I'm running again in November. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited for you. Oh, thank can you. Can we get a picture? Thank you very much. Thank it's my you. honor. Yeah. Thanks for coming thank to Cleveland. Thank you. If I can be helpful, let me know. Thank you. Hey. How you doing? I'm Pat. Pat, good to see you, man. My name's Tom. Tom, good to see you, man. Thank, thank you so much for speaking truth and thank being you. courageous and running and being away from your family for so long. Thank you. Tough. It means a lot. It means so, a lot. We're, really we're, appreciate it. We're doing it for them in some sense. Yeah, right? absolutely. For the next generation of kids. We missed that. Hey, how are you? Good, good, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Good, good quick picture. Good. Yeah, thank, thank you. Good. Yeah. Thank you so Thank you much. Guys. I appreciate Take it, guys. Care. Thank you. Al, is it? Yes, my Good name is you. Al Porter. And Danielle? My fiance. Oh, Danielle. hey. Congratulations. When's your, when's your Danielle or? Danielle. They left the, they left the eye off your. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. So, when do you guys get married? We are looking at getting married about 2025. Okay. And I know about making at least one minute or less. So, part of what I do 
being Republican is we deal with media. Okay. That way we can tell our own story. And you just said something so required. very important to the last person. You were talking about <coughs> generations. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I do on radio along with Brother Art McCoy, we deal with hip-hop. Oh, really? And so a few years ago, we had a love contest that. with the best lyrics to represent our party. So, I love this. So with that being said, that's about... Inner-city Republicans that's offered it. a cash prize for hip-hop. I love this. Hey, that dealt with our principles right there. And that's I awesome. Have man. A good, I have to have a photo with it. Thanks. I, 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 it makes two of us. Yes, indeed. Thank you, man. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank Love you your spirit. Keep it up. Keep sure it up. Will. Absolutely. Hey, hey, good to see you, man. Yeah. I work with him. Oh, you do? Yeah. You do. Seems like very yeah, we started project, with man. Dale. We were with Dale on okay. reaching out to all the blacks in the area. Okay. Well, thank you. We yeah. need to... We need to actually, a lot of people have had their eyes closed by the Democratic Party l lulling them right. into yeah. submission. Doesn't have to stay that way. I, I want to go to the inner city more. Uh, um, good. I think we to show up. do you want to be on the radio show? Hmm, we'll make it happen. Okay, we'll talk to Dale. We'll make it happen. It's live radio, and we've been doing it for 10 years, and it's the largest, for the Ray Dance show, it's the largest audience show. When we do the shows, is it an okay. inner city audience or not necessarily? Inner city audience. Okay. It's basically uh, metropolitan Cleveland. What's that? Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Which, but but the the speaker is he's going to be here. Art's going to be here. He has primarily a black audience. Okay. But the, the group is it's Cleveland's version of the <laughs> Cleveland's version of the Black Panthers. I love, okay, wow, well, very interesting. That's, that's what, very interesting. <laughs> that's, uh, Thank you all for coming to our VIP event. We are so honored that you have the base proud of our Swami here today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank, you, you, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to tell you to thank John Fleshnick, our uh, county commissioner, for always being the VIP reception uh, host. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Oh my gosh, that. it's got to be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to thank see you. you. Thank, thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I think you're working on Bernie too. No. Yeah. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. So uh, I got to say a uh, say a few things here. It's going to take people like you, those of you in this room, to get this country back because it's not going to happen automatically. I said this in the campaign, and I don't say it figuratively, we're in the middle of a war in this country. And it's not a war between black and white. It's not, we were just talking about that. What was your name, sir? Al. Al. Al and I were just talking about that. Showing up in the inner cities of this country, we see the same thing that we see in going to rural communities or elsewhere. It's not black versus white. It's not man versus woman. It's about those of us who love the United States of America and a fringe minority who hates this country and what we stand for. That's the dividing line in this country. And I think right now, more than ever, we need a commander-in-chief who's going to lead us to victory in that war. That man this cycle is going to be Donald J. Trump, the next president of the United States. And we're here to make that happen. But it's not just going to be some president coming from on high to save us. right? If we're going to be saved, it's going to be because we step up and save ourselves. right? I think that We've fallen into this trap believing that this is somebody else's job. And I think this is our moment in this country to recognize it's our 1776 moment. It's not an ordinary election where we sort of go through bickering over what the tax rate is going to be, but everything else is okay. No, this election is about the basic rules of the road. And, you know, I say this, talk to a number of you young people here and many people who tell me about your kids as well. Young people in this country are lost right now. They're hungry for a sense of direction, of
purpose of meaning in this country that we're lacking. And I think it's up to us as a Republican Party to level up this year. Don't just be the party anymore that is against what the Democrats put up. Right? We're running against Joe Biden. We all know that. Well, you know what? Might not be Joe Biden three months from now. I want us to all prepare for that possibility. I think it's quite likely that it'll be somebody else. So if we make it about who we're running against, then we're falling into a trap versus deciding what we actually stand for. Right? This is our year to answer what it means to be a Republican, what it means to be an American in this country. And I think that if we do that, go back to those basic principles that set our country into motion, merit, that you get ahead in this country, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character and your contributions, and the racial DEI systems and the quota systems. If you actually go back to free speech and open debate in this country, that you get to speak your mind as long as I get to in return. Self-governance in this country, the people who we elect to run the government, being the people who actually run the government, not the shadow government in the D.C. bureaucracy that's running the show today. These are basic ideas that aren't black ideas or white ideas. I would go so far as to say they're not even Democrat ideas or Republican ideas. These are American ideals that we fought a revolution in 1776, 250 years ago. And, you know, my friend Bernie Moreno said this at a speech that he gave, and actually it's been an honor, Bernie, to travel this state with you. I'm going to steal it straight from your mouth and share it with this audience is, story of what are we going to say to our founding fathers when we see them and say, well, all of our time is finite on this earth. We see them in a higher place. Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, Alexander Hamilton. Hear their stories of what they tell us. These are the sacrifices that we made for the country. What are the sacrifices that you made when your moment came? Would you say, Bernie, we better have a damn good story to tell them. And I think this is our moment to, to decide that. And so I'm asking all of you to think for the rest of this year, not as Republicans, actually, but as Americans, celebrating not our, as we're taught to anymore, our diversity and our differences. We've done too much of that in the last 10 years, but to revive all of the ways that we're actually the same as Americans, bound by that common set of ideals that set our country into motion 250 years ago. And if we do that, we don't have to be this nation in decline anymore. We don't have to be at the end of the ancient Roman Empire as we're taught to believe. I think as a nation, and I say this as a young person myself, I'm 38 years old, nah, not young compared to some of you, but young for having run for president. I think as a nation right now, we're still a little young, actually, going through our own adolescence, our own teenage years, figuring out who we're going to be when we grow up. And if you all do your part, that's what I'm asking you for. Not just in November, not just casting a ballot, getting every person activated ahead of this primary that we have, getting every person activated across the general election, bringing along people who might have been doubtful about voting Republican in the past, but have actually seen the four years we have. The one unique opportunity we have in this election is we have a president who has actually served as the president before. Usually you have somebody who's running who is telling you all the things they're going to do running against an incumbent. This year we don't have to do that. We've got clear four years of Trump, four years of Biden. Four years of Trump, do you want a sealed border? Do you want a growing economy? Do you want a decline in crime? And do you want to actually avoid World War III? Or do you want open borders? Do you want a flailing economy with inflation, rising crime, and closer to World War III? than we've ever been in our lifetime. That's the choice we face this November. And if you all do your part, I promise you, Donald Trump is going to do his. People in this room, across this room, are going to do yours. People like Bernie running for U.S. Senate, others who I've talked to today are going to do theirs at every level to make sure that our best days, not in some fake politician way, but in a true way to make sure that our best days can actually still be ahead of us, that we're going to look our kids in the eye and mean it when we tell them, you still get ahead in the United States of America with your own hard work, your own commitment, 
your own dedication. That you know what? You are free to speak your mind at every step of the way. That's the American dream. That's what we're running to. Thank you, guys. God bless you. And may we have some victory this year. Thank you, Maddie. Good Thank seeing you, my friends. Great to be here. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, Thank you. we'll be around for a Thank few you. more minutes I appreciate as we Thank get you. before Thank we head into this dinner. Thank you. Thank you. Well said. It's good to see you. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. We get it? It's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Governor, 26. I'm looking at the national level, to be frank with you, but we're going to be helpful in whatever way we can in this state. I mean it. The highest representation of the country. If we don't do it here, we can't do it in the rest right. of the country either. Good man. we got to have somebody good in there, so right. I'll make sure of that. Thank you. Good seeing you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. As good as it's going to get. Is that good? Enough. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you guys. Thank you. We're not going to stop. All right. All right. Thank you, man. Good seeing you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. Faith Andrews, I'm the Lake County Court of Courts. Thank you. It's good to be here. You did. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. We're not gonna. We're not gonna disappoint. It's gonna take. It's gonna take people like you to stand up to stand for our judicial system too. It's, everything's at risk right now. Thank Faith Andrews. Good. Thank you for what you're doing. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Patrick. Nice yeah, to meet you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. It's good to be here. It's good to be here, George. Good to see you, man. Thank you. Your speech on religion was awesome. Oh, thank you. At the debate. I appreciate that. Like, thank you very much. All religions should say that speech. Thank you. Thank you, man. That, that means a lot. All together. That does. Thank you. Hey. Good to meet you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. She was very impressed to be with the guy that ran for president. Oh, awesome. Thank Maybe you. governor? Yeah. Whatever's Maybe. required for the country. I think we're thinking probably the national level, but oh, okay. but but we're I'll be there for you. we're very focused here too. So thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, I'd love that. Thank you. Thank you. He will not believe that. I love that. Thank he's, you. That's very kind. He's a young man. Tell him thank you. And he's voting age. Tell him thank you. thank you. I appreciate thank that. You. Good seeing you, man. I, I played college tennis, so oh, you're not play. I'm keeping my shirt on, all right? All right, all right that's good. You, Depends on the summer. Yeah, hey, I appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. Thank you, man. You still keep it up? I do, yeah. Twice I actually a week. played today. I, you I, did? Yeah, yeah. Where, down in Columbus? In or? Columbus, okay. yeah. My son, we're trying to do a thing where my son's four, so he's... We're getting them slowly into it. Yeah, and it's a great where, where did you play? In? Oh, small school for Lake Erie College. Nice, Division yeah. Two, so, yeah, yeah, I know Lake Erie College. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I went grew up there. in Ohio. So yeah. yeah, so I went there, man. It's a great school. You grew so. up here too? I did, yeah. Did you do all of the like U uh, USDA yeah. stuff growing yeah. up? Yeah. I was a late bloomer though. I played baseball. Oh, you did good like for you. So, well, yeah. it's, it's a transferable skill yeah. set. Hey, yeah. I appreciate everything you're Thank doing. You, man. I, I listen to you, and you're an inspiration. Thank you. Thank you, man. It means a lot, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, such an honor to meet you. Thank you. My wife and I have been huge fans. We've been following you. You're going to do great thank things you. for our country. You are the future of the party. I, I thank want you, man. I that. appreciate that. We're not going to stop. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You always have support in Ohio. Thank you. I appreciate that, my man. We're not going anywhere. Thank you. So thanks a lot. Tom, good I'm to Tom. see you, man. Good seeing you. Good to thanks see you. for being here. Thank you. It's my Listen. honor. It scares me as keeping this election legit. I, know I mean, scary. I mean, we have one choice. Win by a, such a decisive margin that a landslide minus some shenanigans is still a landslide, it's still mm -hmm. a win. That's our choice. I hope so. And then we go back and fix the basic system of single day voting on election day Definitely. as a national holiday, no, no, paper no, ballots, no, government issued ID. No, we, right. we, we get all that done. Get you got to win by a landslide this time to do it. Yes. It shouldn't be controversial. Right. Thank you. But anyway, the yeah, fact that it is. Quick, hey, real quick, yep. I just wanted to give We're you a heads up. There yep. is a... Uh, NBC reporter. Okay. Right behind with the. Uh, okay. I just to that sounds good. You know. know. Uh, I just want to let hung you around know. many of them. <laughs> she said she's covered you before. Thank you. Thank you. So well, even worse. <laughs> good to see you. Hey. Um, what? Um, a few more minutes. A few more minutes, and then okay, and then I'll and then I'll kick off. Yep. 
Good, good, good. I think we're doing well on time, right? Yeah. Yep. Good, good, good. good. As long as we're on, on the schedule that Wednesday game. That, 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 that sounds good. As long as we're on the schedule line, then we've got to get to I'll be in Columbus on time. It's, it's great to be. Great, great energy. You're doing a great job. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me see here. Oh, thank you, yes. Can I get a quick question? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Good I luck. appreciate that. Thank you very much. Hey, it's a real you. pleasure. It's good to be here, man. Honored Thank you. Speak Thank to you. the soul of America. Thank you. We're gonna. We're not gonna stop doing it. I promise you that. Quick Thank picture. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate Keep that. Keep up the Thank good you. work. Thanks a lot. We will. We will. I promise you. Nice. Thank you. I think you ought to simplify it to three key points. Okay. Our freedoms, our rights, and our liberties. That's what it comes down That's to. That's it. That's the whole ball game. Well said, my man. Lay it on the line. I appreciate that. That's what it's on. That's what it's on, that's what's on like the line what this year. Like Thank you. you. Thank you. I appreciate Maybe that. It's a privilege. You know, my parents are from Ukraine, and they absolutely love you. Tell them I appreciate that. The biggest irony. And I love them back. But they I don't think I, I think a lot of people may think it's an irony. I don't think they do. I think they're being betrayed by some of their leadership. They are. But, uh, but that's okay. Tell them thank you. Yes, of course. That means a lot to me. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Let's thank do it, so brother. Much. Yep. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Hi. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So proud of you. Thank you. That's so kind. That's so kind. I appreciate it, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Good to see you, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Big fans of the Breakfast Club interview. Oh yeah, yeah. I did the way you said actually. You know the more recent one or the first one? The first one. Oh, that was that one. The more recent one was chill. Yeah, the first one. That woman, I can't remember her name. She was something else. Okay. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Means a lot. Thanks. Yeah. That was a fun one, though. Right. Oh man, that was great. Thank you. I man. really appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you. Yes, sir. It means a lot, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Tennis, hey, I'm keep it up. Oh, so, you are. Yeah. Sign, it. sign this for Jeff. That's good. That's good. Jeff, J E F F. I'm not going to okay. bring elbows, but I'll try. Give him a message. Tell him to speak freely. He's a young. He's a youngster. Yes. Oh, good. Doubly important. <laughs> How old is he? Uh, 27. <laughs> good. Thank you. Tom, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Hey, John. Hey. <laughs> good, good to see you. Okay, quick go, John. Good to see you guys. <laughs> good to meet you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. I really hope you are who you say to be. And I'm not trying to be funny. I hope we all are. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. You know, we, do yeah, thanks. Or thanks. Somebody thanks. With savvy, can somebody savvy over Thank there take a picture? No? Could, no? No? Because yeah. my arm's not that long. And I didn't mean to sound rude when I said that. But you're no, no, fantastic. No, no, no. I hope you really, truly are who you say you are. I'm sorry. We aspire to be. Rude. No, no, it doesn't. I mean, I think that it's a, it's a profound thing. To, I mean, it's a deep thing to say. I mean, we all set ideals for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we're all always going to, from President Trump to myself to anybody else who's other than. Yeah. Other than Jesus yeah, Christ, yeah, right? Right, right. Everybody's going to fall short of whatever ideals they've set, but we're going to aspire to them. And I'm in this for the country. For the, so good, for the good of everybody. For the good of the country. You're, you're so that's so what I'm going to do. So. Terrific. I don't want to take more of your time. I appreciate I know everybody's it. Everybody's there. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot. And I'm you're sure inspiring you're young guys. guys. Thank you, man. That's I appreciate that. Real quick. Let's just get it. Real quick. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah. There we go. Do me a favor. Just say hi to Sean and Daniel. All right. All right, right now. Sean and Daniel. Keep it up, guys. How old is Sean and Daniel? Sean is 21. We're both 21. 21. Nice. <laughs> Two well, years in college. Ohio's... We're doing it for your generation, and oh. I will tell you this is just don't be afraid. Speak your mind, and what's the worst that could happen, right? Absolutely. I promise you, it's not that bad. Give it a try. Awesome. We'll see you guys. Yeah, you're Thanks, inspired. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. What's up, bud? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. All the best. Yeah, thank you, brother. Good to see you. Hey, wait for you to write this ship, though, huh? We're going to do it. I We're going to do it. Thank Hi. you. It's wonderful meeting Thank you. you. Thank I, you. And I, I, I love your style, Thank and you. I admire your sincerity, and I'm Thank proud you. to say you're the first future president I've ever met. Thank you for yes. saying I, I take the responsibility seriously of hearing you say something like that. Well, so. I mean it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. you guys. Thanks for being here. Keep pushing. Thank Keep you. Pushing. It means a lot. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you. Thank you, Donnie. I appreciate that. Thank you. That's my father-in-law right there. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, my man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Hey, pleasure to meet you. Good to see How you, man. You? How are you? Good. I just saw your interview with Tucker Carlson the other day. Oh, yeah, it was yeah, good. It was yeah, awesome. talked to him a few wonderful. times. He's a good man. Good. You're an inspiration of the younger generation. Thank you, brother. It means a lot to me, man. It's nice to see Ohio Buckeye. Tell the rest of the country how to do it. Yes. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to me, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. This is my dad. Thank you. It's your dad. Good to see you. Again, it's your dad and grandfather. I appreciate it. Your grandfather, do you have a kid? or you? No, I'm 21. Do you have another? Yeah, we have my oldest. Your oldest has Okay, got it. I have a question. Are you in real estate? I'm not in real estate. I mean, I own some, but it's not my profession. All right, tell me real estate, but you're an inspiration. I hope to be like you someday. Thank you, man. politics, everything. I appreciate that, man. It means a lot to me. Thanks, thanks, brother. Judge, it's good to see you. Can you take a good picture of one of us? Yes, and absolutely. Here, let me hold guys for being here. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hey. My friend, Art McCoy. Oh, Art, how you doing? Art, Art McCoy, McCoy is the president who started Black on Black Crime in America. I mean, in, uh, in, uh, in Cleveland. In Cleveland. He's doing a great job. So, I was just talking to... Talk right after you. Okay, and I, I was just talking to... Who was... I, who was Al Porter. Al, yeah. yeah. Okay. Al he was telling me about you. He was telling me about you, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's good to meet you. We've got to we we gotta focus on the inner cities. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You do a dial-ins ever? Yeah, I do. Okay. We'll we'll make it happen. Happen. Your Keep it in. We'll Keep it real, happen. man. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. <laughs> good to see you. Different, different place. Different place. I'm not going to go into my private conversations with President Trump and be respectful of that. But what I've said is I'm going to make sure he's elected as the next president, do everything I can to do that, and to make sure that he's as successful as he possibly can be for actually getting our country back. Because I don't think we have the luxury of time. I'm not going to go into any details. I'm not going to go into. I'm not going to go into details of our conversation. What I'll say is, we're going to do whatever's required for the country, and my focus on making sure that he is able to deliver not just a small margin victory, but a unifying, decisive, moral mandate like what Ronald Reagan did in the '80s. I think we have an opportunity to. So thanks a lot for being here. Thanks. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for coming back. I'm on a family vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Good seeing you. First time. Great to meet you. Good seeing um, you. No Roy Samuels said to say hi. He's a good friend down in Columbus. I know he's a supporter of the campaign and really enjoyed the campaign. Thank you. So, thank I appreciate you. that. Yeah. Thank you. Real quick picture thank you. here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Sir. I appreciate you. that. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I appreciate thank that. Thank you. One quick picture. Thank you. I'll get you. The thank you, guys. Okay. We're for you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Cole. Cole. Trump are my guys. So, Thank you, man. I appreciate it. It's your generation we're doing it for, man. So oh, yeah. keep it up. Jimmy keep it up. Likes for a fellow entrepreneur yeah. I would say don't don't chase the path. The tempting thing to do is you see somebody's done something and it works. That's actually a siren song to chase. You want some validation, but you have to make sure whatever you're doing is that something nobody in the planet is offering exactly what you are. Hold yourself to that standard. Without that, it's hard to succeed. I think I got yeah. my own thing. Good for you. Good for you. Headed this way? We'll take a look, man. Good seeing you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Very excited. Good to see you. Thank you. Hey. One more picture. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. One more picture right here. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> hey, this is the CTO of Quebec. Oh, this is you. You <laughs> told me about you. Good, thank you. I'm glad you used this picture. Good to see you, man. All right, to get money out of the sea school of Quebec. <laughs> Good thank seeing you guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, for, thanks for everything you do. Yeah, we're, we've got his back. We've got this man's back. Thank you. Right, thank you, man. Yeah, he's perfect. He, What's that? Uh, he, uh,
Mr. Right. Thank you. Good to see you, man. Thank you. you. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mark. I just wanted to say hello. Thank you. And uh, make sure you have a card. Let's talk sometime. I work for Senator Vance, obviously. Good. Well, tell him, tell him to say hello. I will. I Most that. definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. It's a good room here. Good. Come this way. Good seeing you, Neil. Thank you, man. Good seeing you. Nice room. Is that like 375? Good, good, good. Okay. Hey, gentlemen, we just wanted to say thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you very much. We appreciate like your you service. Much. Thank I you, like, guys. Thank I you. Like it's, an you it's an honor. It's an honor, sir. Thank you. Spouse. Thank you. Thank you. Take care for being here. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Good event. You know, a lot of energy in this room, and I think people care. I mean, that's what I miss is... You go about the everyday right. people. Hey, good seeing you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good Thank see you. you. Thank you. I, yes. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I, I hope you can uh, get on that ticket with, the, with Mr. Trump. Whatever's you know. required, we're going to do it. Hey, hey, you know. Thank well, you, We sir. appreciate everything you've done. Appreciate it, Jeff. Well, your run was really fantastic. It means a lot really, to me. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to get the job done one way or another. All right. Please Thank do. you, man. God bless I appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. And you know what? That energy keeps me going. Keep going. So exciting of an evening. Hey, thank you. Thank you. How about Sit right here. Thank you. They must have bought it.
Public guard. Oh. Public guard. Post. Raise that. Hurt. Bishop Gerard Maribel, if you could join us for our invocation. Please welcome our bishop. I don't know where my mother would be. What would she say if she saw this? She told me years ago, an angel came to her. And that angel said to her, this child that you have, mm -hmm. I'm going to bless him. Amen. And it's going to be a blessing to many. And I've seen God done things that I cannot explain, I cannot understand. But if you believe, you shall receive. I'm going to say a prayer, a small prayer. If you have a phone, you can look on it if you please. My self divine. My self divine is radiant, shining, inspired, inspiring poise, relaxed, dynamic, creative, talented, and gifted. My self divine is loving, lovable, adorable, beautiful. My self divine is all that God is, for it is God, infinite good, living in me, through me, and as me. I say of my self divine, from Everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. I confess my soul divine to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. My soul divine is transcendent and soars on wings of eagles, above all of the suggestions and acquaintance of evil. Eternal God, most blessed and most holy. We worship and we adore you. We acknowledge your infinite glory. We celebrate your divine majesty. We praise your name. You are a healer. You are a deliverer. You are a protector. You are a provider. You are a lawyer. You are El Shaddai. Yeah. You are El Adonai. Yeah. You are Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Kappa, Lambda, Mono, Fushi, Omicron. Father, if I can be in this great nation of the United States of America, number one will be number one until you come. I give you the praise. Bless everyone here today yes. with your presence, with your love, yes. with your destiny. Yes. In the name of God Almighty, yes. I pray today Hallelujah. and let everybody say amen. 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 Thank you, Bishop. Well, we want to carry it.
Thank you to our Lake County veterans. Appreciate the color guard. As chairman, it's always great to have uh, I all sorts of candidates and elected officials here in the room. We are truly blessed as a party statewide and locally to have so many folks who have stepped up to run for public office, uh, especially some of these highest offices in our land. I'd like to introduce now one of our candidates for U.S. Senate who is going to do the introduction of our special guest. Bernie Marino. We're, uh, can you hear me? Yep. We're going in turbocharged mode. I wasn't ready. I was pouring water, Chairman. Uh, thank you for being here. Really appreciate everybody coming to this room. I, I want to tell you my impression of how transformative the bank has been in the Republican Party with one very simple thing. You notice my wife is not here. She travels with me everywhere I go. She's currently speaking at the Delaware County uh, dinner down there. But my youngest son, who's 25, who cares about sports, going to the gym, cars, football, baseball, basketball, and politics is about item number 700 in this agenda. When I said, hey, I'm going to this event in Lake County with the bank, he goes, OK, Dad, I'll go with you. Uh -huh. Thank you all. The honor is, is mine to be here tonight. And I, I think you're well represented here in Lake County. I want to just say, first of all, round of applause for Dale Fellows putting this together today and leading the way and the warm invitation you gave me. I want to also recognize somebody I've known since people say, well, aren't you in high school now? And no, I'm not in high school right now. But I was about 20 years ago when I first met over a lunch in Cincinnati, Ohio a guy who was the chairman of the Hamilton County Republican Party, but is now the chair of the Republican Party of our state, Alex Triantafilu, who I love because his last name is harder to pronounce than mine. <laughs> One of the reasons we've stayed in touch and, and kept in touch. Even Jerry Serino, where is he? I, I saw you beforehand. Pushing against the ESG movement and everything else you're doing. Amazing job and outstanding others who I'm not going to be able to recognize above all as well. Bernie Moreno, who I hope is the next senator defeating Sherrod Brown, putting that man out of a job. So I've been proud to support along with President Trump and the other great candidates who are running for offices up and down the ballot. I said this to a few of you earlier. I'm going to say it to you as well. It's not about Donald Trump. It's not about Bernie Moreno. It's not about me. 
It's not even about anyone who's running for any one of those positions. It's about you, the people of this country. And the reason I ran for president, I didn't imagine I was going to do it. I was an entrepreneur building businesses, 38 years old. We had just had two young children. One's one and a half years old, and one of them has just turned four. My wife is a surgeon at Ohio State where she's taking care of cancer survivors. It was not a convenient time to embark on the journey that we did. But we did it for that next generation, for our kids. And I think that if we don't get this right in the next 10, 15 years, I think that's what we're looking at. I don't think we have a country left. That's what's at stake. We're not working with a lot of time here. And so I want to talk to you today about why it is. Now forget the what, individual policies. Why are we doing what we're doing? Today's an interesting day. I didn't know this. I learned this earlier today. It's National Detransition Day. Interesting what that means, right? That we even have to have a day that recognizes this. There's a number of young kids in the country. I've met several of them in traveling this country who have gone through gender conversion therapy over the last 10 years, who now regret their decisions and have tried to detransition back to who they are but can't do it after chemical intervention, chemical castration, genital mutilation, and worse. And we have to have a day in the United States of America now to recognize those people. That's where we are as a country. England, on the other side of the Atlantic, just this week, I think it was today, officially banned the use of chemical castration or genital mutilation in gender conversion therapy in kids. That's the United Kingdom. <laughs> the ones we fought a declaration of independence and an American revolution to declare independence from, that's who we have to learn from today. And, and I, I say this without getting angry, but to get to the bottom of what's actually going on in our country. Let's just think through this. What's going on with this modern transgender fixation in our country? Let's just start with that one. The same movement, the LGBTQIA, there's so many letters, they just put a little plus at the end. The same movement that said the sex of the person you're attracted to is hardwired on the day you're born is the same one that now says that your own biological sex is completely fluid over the course of your life. These two things can't make sense if you're operating according to principles of logic. But if you're subscribing to a modern religion, then you can believe these things at the same time. Now, let's go to a different modern religion. You have the trans religion. We can think about the climate religion. The same movement that says that, you know what, we have to stop burning carbon in the United States of America is perfectly fine with shifting those same carbon emissions to places like China. The same people who are against fossil fuels are also against the greatest form of carbon-free energy production known to mankind, that is, nuclear energy. Again, you can't believe these things at the same time if you're operating according to a logical system. But you can if you're subscribing to a new kind of religion in this country. And that's what I was going to say a few words about tonight. Is that it's right when, when for your generation, remind me your name again, man? Kevin. Kevin, I appreciate you coming out. I see this in the next generation. Is that right now in this country, we are lost actually. And I speak as a member of that generation now. We are starved, hungry for purpose and meaning and identity. At a time in our national history when the things that used to fill that void, faith in God, patriotism, hard work, family, these things have disappeared. And that leaves a black hole in its wake, a moral vacuum. And it's when you have a vacuum that runs that deep, that's when the poison fills the void. We almost obsess too much over what the poison is, actually. Pick your favorite one. Transgenderism, climatism, covidism, wokeism. I would argue Zelenskyism is on that list. Pick your favorite one, but what these are, these are symptoms of a deeper void of purpose and meaning. You know, I'm sitting in front of a picture of Abraham Lincoln, a great Republican. We love Donald Trump, we love Ronald Reagan, but my favorite Republican of all time is the man on this stage right now, Abraham Lincoln, 160 years ago. Who said that the dogmas of a quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. I say the dogmas of 1980 are inadequate to actually meet the needs of the present in 2024 today. 
And I think we as a Republican Party, we need to level up this year. This is our year where we move beyond just fighting the other side, defining what we're running from. We can't just be running from something anymore. Now is our moment to actually start running to something, to our vision of what it means to be an American. What does it mean to be a citizen of this nation in the year 2024? And to me, it means we believe in the ideals of 1776. Ideals like merit and the pursuit of excellence. That you get ahead in this country, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character and your contributions. That's why we need to end affirmative action and group quota systems in every area of American life. Means the people who we elect to run the government ought to be the ones who actually run the government. Not the shadow government in Washington, D.C. that's running the show today. Fire 75% of those bureaucrats. Means that we believe in the rule of law. And I say this as the kid of legal immigrants to this country. Bernie, you and I share that in common. Your first act of entering this country cannot break the law. And that is why we need to use our own military to secure our own southern border. And I would say our northern border, too. And birthright citizenship for the kids of illegal migrants. Shouldn't apply to them in this country. Have a national language in this country, English, as the national language of the United States of America. That's not xenophobic. That's not racist. It's what it means to be a citizen of a united nation. And I think part of what's happened in the last 10, 20 years, I grew up into this, is that we were all taught to celebrate our diversity and our differences so much that we forgot all of the ways that we're really the same as Americans, bound by that common set of ideals. You see, our, our diversity can be a beautiful thing. It can be. But it only means something if there's something greater that unites us across that diversity. Because without that, think about it. We're really just a different-looking group of two-legged higher mammals walking some geographic space that we call a country, do what our iPhones tell us to do on a given day. That's not a country. America is a vision of what that place can be. It's on the back of our coins for a reason. E pluribus unum is what it says. It means from many, one. That's what we've lost in this country. Here's how we're going to get it back. It's going to be by all of us, not just me, not just Donald Trump, not just the leaders, Bernie Moreno, Jerry, others in this room, not just elected leaders, every one of us starting to speak our minds in the open again. Say in public what you will say in private at the dinner table. Say it with a spine. Say it like your country depends on it, because it does. If we don't do it now, we're not going to have a country left to pass on to our kids. Our kids, we talk about the importance of teaching them history without actually talking about history in the process. And so one of the things actually after I've ended the campaign, I've reflected on, I wish I had done a little bit more of over the last year was not just talk about the importance of teaching our kids history, but to even use occasions like this one, especially when we talk to young people, but even, even an audience like tonight, not just on a college campus, but even here today to remember the moments of our American history that taught us who we are. Young people like Kevin, you think about our founding fathers. What are you taught about them today? They were slaveholders. They were imperfect. Our country was founded in 1619, not 1776. That's what we teach our kids to believe without actually teaching them the ideals that they aspire to in the first place. See, our founding fathers, they weren't perfect people. Never going to fall into the myth of saying they were. George Washington, Alexander Hamilton, John Jay, Thomas Jefferson, these guys butted heads more than the people do even in American politics today. But they founded a nation that wasn't founded on perfection. They weren't perfect. See, our nation, the left will incessantly remind us that our nation is imperfect, that we never lived up to those ideals. And my response to them is this. I'd rather live in a country that has ideals and falls short of them than a country that doesn't have ideals at all, that were founded on the pursuit of a more perfect union. The pursuit of liberty, equality, and justice for all. Think about the character of our founding fathers. See, I, I ran for president at 38. People said, that's young. Is that too young to be a president? I, I, I was biased. I didn't think so. <laughs> but Thomas Jefferson, you know, he, he was 33 years old when he wrote the Declaration of Independence. 
He invented the swivel chair while he was at it, believe it or not. The swivel chair that we sit in today was invented by Thomas Jefferson in preparation to write that Declaration of Independence. He's the guy who actually put patents and intellectual property into the Constitution. Many people don't know. Patent law actually originates from the Constitution because Thomas Jefferson put it there because he said, I'm such an inventor that I want people like me to be rewarded in that country. He invented the polygraph test. There's a guy actually, along with Benjamin Franklin, he was another co-signer of the Declaration of Independence, invented the lightning rod. The Franklin stove, one of the leading inventions in thermodynamics of that day, was invented by one of our political thinking founding fathers who signed the Declaration of Independence. The bifocal spectacle, a remedy to the common cold. All of these just came from Benjamin Franklin. You think that's an exception? Thomas Jefferson, okay, fine. This guy invents the polygraph test, invents the swivel chair, bankrupts himself nearly, spending on public libraries. Think about today's class of politicians. They'll use the public money to enrich themselves. He uses private money to try to enrich this country. Almost went bankrupt several times over. Maybe Thomas Jefferson was an exception. Or well, then you get to Benjamin Franklin, another great inventor, one of the great thinkers and scientists of his day. Boundless in the inventions that he created in a short time on Earth while also signing the Declaration of Independence. Well, maybe that's just two of them. Those are the ones maybe we still learn about in school. What about Robert Livingston? Another co-signer of that document. While ambassador to France, invents the steamship along with Robert Fulton. One of the key inventions that led to the Industrial Revolution. Just in his spare time while on the other side of the Atlantic. Think about this. There was something in the water back then. <laughs> something we're missing today. That's that inner animal spirit at our founding. We've been taught today to shut up, sit down, do as you're told, stay in your lane. What we tell Kevin and people in your generation today, that you didn't get a four-year college degree. You didn't have the expertise to do it. As opposed to what our founding fathers believed, which is, you know what? I'm not going to be stopped by any government. I'm not going to be stopped by any system that tells me what I can or cannot achieve. I'm not going to be stopped by my genetics or my skin color or my identity superimposed on me by a government. I am a unique agent who's going to achieve anything I ever I want with my own ingenuity and hard work and dedication. That's what I take from our founding. It's not just the Constitution. It's not just the words on a page. It's a culture that we've lost in this country, but we can still revive for that next generation. That inner animal spirit it has been domesticated. It has been tamed into submission by this new culture that penalizes excellence and celebrates victimhood. Our culture of excellence, it has leapt oceans to places like China to lift them up while their culture of Maoist victimhood has come all the way back here to hold us down. When we rallied behind the cry to make America great again, that's what we hungered for, the unapologetic pursuit of excellence in this country. That's what it means to be an American. That's why my parents crossed oceans to come here legally through the front door in the right way 40 years ago. That's why our kids will grow up in a country where they have the chance to do the same thing. And, and what I ask of all of you is to share with your kids, with your neighbors, not just the importance of studying history, but use it as an occasion to learn about our own founding ourselves. I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but I saw Abraham Lincoln's picture here the whole time. I couldn't resist concluding with uh, probably my favorite story about him which was actually one that not many people are aware of because it was before he was, he was well known as the U.S. president or even a political leader in this country. So we learned about our founding fathers, right? The slaveholders, the Thomas Jeffersons, who we can't celebrate anymore because he didn't live up to his ideals. What we don't learn is that John Adams, his compatriot, his competitor, who he came back and made men's with later in life, was actually a strict abolitionist on principle did not own slaves. Now, that sounds easy to say today, but imagine at that time, right, the people who sit around today and criticize our founding fathers for being slaveholders would have been the slaveholders had they been around at the time of our founding fathers. John Adams was a guy who actually bucked the trend. His wife, Abigail, as well. They were principled abolitionists. He only had one term as U.S. president. The only guy, you go to Washington, D.C., that doesn't have a memorial built after him. I think that should change. But nonetheless, our first non-founding father U.S. president was his son. John Quincy Adams. Also, it's kind of a tragedy that ran in, the, ran in the family. He didn't end up having a great presidency. He was a good Secretary of State, but his presidency never lived up to his expectations. It itched him. It bothered him. 
He toiled with that, that he felt that he had a duty to this country. He was put in the position to serve, and there's just all the things that he promised to do that just didn't play out in his presidency, and especially after having been one of the legendary secretaries of state. That bothered him and stuck with him. So in his time after the presidency, he tried one thing after another to try to start a nonprofit, try to give lectures, travel the country. None of that really fulfilled him. He became the only U.S. president in our history. Could you imagine this happening today? After being the U.S. president, goes back and runs for a position in Congress. Runs to be a congressman with the sole goal of doing what he couldn't get done as U.S. president, which was abolishing slavery. So when he gets to Congress, that's his objective. This guy's already been the president. He's got nothing to lose. Congress had a rule called the gag rule. Okay, And the gag rule was that you couldn't actually mention the word slavery on the Congress floor. It's actually a rule of debate. They didn't want it debated as a topic, and so there was a rule, the rules of procedure in Congress, you couldn't say the word. This guy's already been the U.S. president. He went in with this objective. He's got nothing to lose. So John Quincy Adams repeatedly on the Congress floor says the word slavery, 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 slavery. Purposefully gets himself censured. And then he uses his trial defending his own ability to stay in Congress to make the case for abolition. Two weeks, morning to night, making the case for abolition. By the end of his trial, not only was he reinstated as congressman, but Congress had abolished the gag rule itself, which laid the foundation for what followed in the next number of years and decades. Now, he died a few years later, giving a speech on the Congress floor. That's how John Quincy Adams died. Former U.S. president, now congressman, given a speech on Capitol Hill on the Congress floor, has a stroke in the middle of that speech, dies, goes to the congressional anteroom chamber. They try to keep him alive for two days. Not enough to keep him alive. Eventually, he dies. And they take volunteers for who's going to carry out his funeral rites and be the congressman who carry him out of that building. And the first person to raise his hand was a young first-term congressman who nobody had heard of, that was inspired by his message. And that was actually none other than Abraham Lincoln. But these are the stories of, of our history in this country. We no longer tell. That's who we are as Americans. And so we have a lot to be proud of as a country, actually. This is the last best hope. If the shining city on a hill no longer shines, what hope does the rest of the world still yet have? We don't have to accept that we are this nation in decline. We don't have to accept that we're at the end of the ancient Roman Empire. I don't think we are. I think we still can be a nation in our ascent. And I don't say this as some sort of fake optimist. I'm not the guy who's going to come in here and tell you guys it's morning in America right now because it's not. We all have eyes. We can see that. But it can be not going to tell you the American dream is alive and well, right? It's not. It's alive and hanging on for life support. That's where we are. But it can be. It's not going to happen from some political messiah coming from on high to save us. If we're going to be saved, it is going to be because we save ourselves. And so I'm asking every one of you to do your part, be it running for the U.S. Senate, be it running the local party, be it running the state party being pushing back against the politicization of private capital markets, using government actors to do it, be it outside of government. Countless of you I met even in the dinner leading up to this, entrepreneurs, creating jobs, doing it through pride, achieving something, leaving a legacy for your kids that you can be proud of without having to apologize for it. Whatever it is, saying in public what you'll otherwise say in private at the dinner table, saying it with a spine, with conviction, with respect. But part of respect is that you respect your neighbor enough to tell him what you actually think, to say no to this culture of fear that has spread across our country like an epidemic, to stand up with a spine for who we are. Every one of you owes it to this country to do your part. And when we face George Washington and Alexander Hamilton and John Adams and John Quincy Adams and Abraham Lincoln in the afterlife, favorite story that Bernie Moreno tells, I'm going to steal it from you today, Bernie, is... When we face off with them, they're going to tell us these are the sacrifices that we made for the country. Now, tell me about the sacrifices 
that you made for our country. And you better have a damn good answer when you're asked that question. That's on us. So you guys do your part. I'm going to do mine. And may our best day still yet be ahead of us, guys. God bless you and your families. And may God bless our United States of America. Thank you, guys. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my Just God. Just for me? Oh, my God. Yeah. Let's go. Thank Thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you. I love that. I love that. We're gonna make our way to Columbus. Right. So thank you. I thank just you. wanted to thank Vivek for coming and our good friends from Dubin A Winery. Uh yeah. from the yeah. and Jeff. They wanted to they couldn't be here tonight, so this is from them. Our number one winery here in Lake County. So thank you. Thank you. So I'll give you another another story. I don't know if you know this.